Well, there's definitely light at the end of this tunnel. We just have a few more things to do on this bridge port and we'll be able to call this rehab complete. I still want to give the turret, the ram, and the ram adapter a good once over and a cleaning. I'll start by removing the four bolts that hold the turret down to the column. And once again, I'm utilizing this borrowed engine hoist to lift this assembly off of the column so I can get it over to the workbench. To remove the ram from the turret, um, I need to remove these two bolts that um, clamp onto the dovetail as well as the pinion shaft. The pinion shaft normally has a handle on it which when you crank it allows you to move the ram uh, back and forth. And it's going to make it a heck of a lot easier to pull this thing out if the handle is actually attached. So I, I lifted it back up with the engine hoist so I could install the handle and then pull it straight out. With nothing holding the ram onto the turret and the ram still connected to the engine hoist, I'm pulling back on the hoist to try to uh, separate the two. In hindsight, I wonder if this wouldn't have been easier if I would have uh, done this with the turret still attached to the base column. It's funny how I notice when I watch back these videos just how much of a mess my workbench and in some cases my workshop actually is. With the RAM now on the workbench I can start disassembling the components of the RAM adapter. I'm starting with this uh, adjusting gear. This is part of the mechanism that allows you to tilt the quill housing head uh, left and right. <clears throat> then the three uh, adapter locking bolts can be loosened and removed. There's a grub screw that secures this locking ring to one side of the um, adapter pivot pin. I don't have a spanner wrench that will fit this, so I may do with a couple of punches and a hammer. Then use a brass punch and a mini sledge to knock out that pivot pin. And now the adapter is free of the RAM and I can pull it out, set it on the bench and get it cleaned up. Once I remove this grub screw from the vertical adjusting worm, the shaft will come right out and the spacer um, 
the worm itself and a thrust washer uh, come right out of the ram. And then the last thing to come out is this safety stop pin. This essentially uh, keeps you from over rotating the head. Well, that's just about it for the disassembly. Um, now with all of these parts um, separated, I will break out the purple power and start getting everything good and clean and degreased. 12 seconds later. With everything good and clean, I can start putting this all back together, starting with the RAM clamp and the RAM locking studs. The borrowed engine hoist comes back into the picture here. I'm using it to lift the RAM up so I can slide it back onto the turret. Moved some stuff around a little bit here on the workbench to try to make this a little bit easier. Trying to line these dovetails up with the ram perfectly level uh, is posing to be quite the challenge. Obviously, this ram is not perfectly balanced on this lift point. So I'm using these little blocks of wood to try to lift up the back end of it to stay level when I lower the front end of it and help me slide it onto these dovetails. It took a little bit of effort, but once I got everything lined up, I was able to slide the ram right onto the turret. I'm, uh, reinserting the ram pinion. Uh, I know some people would put grease on this. I prefer to use oil. Uh, I don't like to put grease anywhere that chips can end up and based on what I took out of this thing chips will end up inside this uh, dovetail and this set screw um, holds the ram pinion in position oiling this pinion might be a little bit more trouble later on but I think it's well worth it than using the grease I just need to line up the slot in the pinion with where the set screw will sit. At this point, I wanted to just get this back on the mill column. So I decided I was going to install the turret and the ram as is. Um, and then add the RAM adapter afterwards. And yes, I did realize I put this thing in a stupid balance position. I should have slid the RAM back further, but once I got it off the workbench, I just said to heck with it. We're going to go with it as it is. I can make it work. And since I, I didn't move the spider that I left in the column base, it was relatively easy for me to um, reinstall the turret locking studs.
with the turret secured to the column, I'll go ahead and pull the ram back to make it easier to install the adapter and then the head. I'll place the vertical adjusting worm gear on top of this uh, thrust washer and then a spacer goes on top of the worm gear um, having to hold all of this into position a little tricky um, while inserting the uh, adjusting shaft at the same time. I'd like to take a few seconds just to say thank you to all of you that are watching my videos and especially to those that have chosen to subscribe to the channel. And if you're not a subscriber, I would hope you would consider hitting that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified. And don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you like this video. It certainly helps a lot with the YouTube analytics. I'll take advantage of the movements the table and knee provide me. I put the RAM adapter up on some blocks and then raised the knee and moved the table around uh, in and out until I was able to put this in a spot where it would be easy to tilt it in position and insert the uh, pivot pin. I just need to make sure that I line up this roll pin that's still in the cap of the pivot pin with the corresponding hole in the ram. The locking ring goes on next and I will uh, use the tried and true double punch method when you don't have a spanner wrench that will fit. Using that vertical uh, adjusting worm gear, I will bring the nod of the head up to approximately the zero degree mark and um, tighten up the locking studs. Just a few more bits to go, including this quill housing adjustment gear. This is used, like I mentioned before, to tilt the head left or right. The last thing to go in before the head can go back on is the safety stop pin. I have the fully assembled head now on the engine hoist and we'll get it set on the um, installation post that I made some months ago. This post is uh, secured to the head with a three quarter inch R8 collet. Now I can bolt it down to the table and use the in and out, left, right, up and down movements of the table to guide it onto the ram. I put the four T-bolts into the slot of the ram adapter and get them approximately in the, the area in which they'll match up to the holes in the quill housing. I cut out this little template from some scrap wood that 
that uh, will help me hold these bolts in the right spot while I bring the head and the RAM adapter together. Hopefully this will prevent those bolts from constantly getting out of position or falling. I'm just trying to get the head close enough to where I can get the bolts started into their respective holes. And once they are, I can hold the bolts in position with this tool, I'll call it, and then pull the ram in. And I just need to tweak the left and right adjusting screw so it seats with the worm gear that's on the RAM adapter. I just need to install the nuts on the T-bolts and I think the finish line is in sight on this project. Well, I've had this machine in my shop for about a year now, and this is the first time that it's been completely together and running. And I believe it's the first time this machine has been running in probably 15 years, maybe more. Shortly after recording this video, which I did not get on camera, I did have one minor, could have been major issue a snap ring that holds the spindle pulley hub on had come loose. Uh, luckily I caught it in time, had to do some disassembly of the head, but it was able to replace that snap ring with a new one and that solved that issue. Well, that wraps up this project. The run out on the spindle isn't great, but it's not terrible either. I think for my hobby uses, this is going to be more than enough precision. Maybe someday I'll replace the spindle bearings. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.